Now, in ADHD, we believe, and this is really where we're doing some research to try to understand better, we believe that the emotionality is better described as uh, difficulties in emotional self-regulation. That's a big mouthful of words to talk about, so I'll break it down for you. Um, we also experience emotions. It's a natural part of uh, human nature. Uh, but we also have learned, as we grow up, as we mature, to regulate our emotions. By regulation, I mean when we feel angry, we don't simply do the first impulse. We don't simply act on the first impulse that comes to our mind. We think if we think before we act. We calm ourselves down. We then hopefully act appropriately. Not always, but in most cases, most people will act appropriately even when they're very upset. That's called self-regulation. We learn to soothe ourselves. We learn to talk to ourselves and uh, say, okay, it's not all that bad. Okay, I know this person upset me, but I shouldn't throw this rock at them. Uh, we uh, calm ourselves down. We're able to get things done even though we're in a very serious emotional state. Um, we were able to uh, get our work done. A co-worker may do something to upset us, but we can still sit down, get our work done. A person who can't self-regulate experiences an emotion and then can't calm themselves down. Uh, because they can't calm themselves down, they typically do something that's counterproductive. The classic example is road rage. Somebody cuts you off on the highway, you get annoyed with this person, most of us are just annoyed. We might mutter something under our breath and we just go on with our day. Uh, an ADHD person who can't regulate their emotions uh, might chase the car in front of them. They might you know, do something worse, bang into the car, uh, cause some kind of violent uh, accident because, because of that. That's because of an inability to self-regulate the emotion. Another aspect of self-regulation that's important, or I should say deficient self-regulation, is that we can observe deficient self-regulation even when the emotions aren't dramatically strong. So I mentioned before with mania, the furious irritability of, the, of a manic episode is a very strong, wild emotion. A child punching a wall and punching a hole in the wall, uh, throwing things and breaking things, attacking somebody with a knife. Um, with deficient emotional self-regulation, we can experience emotions that are not very dramatic. I might just be annoyed because somebody took my parking space at work. Uh, I'm not yelling, kicking, and throwing things. I don't even think of doing that. But if I'm not self-regulating, it might impair my ability to work. And therefore, I'm not as effective as I might be. And that, if it gets serious enough, is a reason to be treated. So what we think, theoretically at least, is that this deficient emotional self-regulation is part of the syndrome of ADHD, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. In part, we believe that because uh, people with ADHD also have difficulty self-regulating their behavior. They can't self-regulate their, uh, their attention, which is why they're inattentive. And they can't self-regulate their impulse, which is why they're, they're impulsive. They, they uh, commit many impulsive behaviors. They're the kind of person who might interrupt you during a conversation because they can't wait to say what they want to say. Uh, the child who blurts, out, uh, who blurts out answers in the classroom before the teacher calls on him uh, is involved in impulsive behavior. The child that runs into the street to get a ball without looking for oncoming traffic is behaving impulsively. In just the same way, we can be impulsive about our emotions. And in fact, you can think of deficient emotional self-regulation as also emotional impulsivity.